Please be careful out there on the road. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the story of 25-year-old Carlethia Russell, an Alabama woman who was gone missing after trying to rescue a baby, a toddler, that she saw on the side of the road walking by themselves with no other adults visible anywhere nearby. Now, before we get into the news clip, I just want to say this. I think this was a setup. I've seen this before where it would be a baby stroller by itself on the side of the road, a toddler, a small child, or it would be a family that appears to be broken down. Oh, we need help. Can I use your phone? All this and that. And the third, and then what ends up happening is it could be a kidnapping, carjacking, assault, a lot of other things. Now, let's go ahead and get into the clip. If you want to see this in full without my commentary, link, as always, will be in the description. But you see the headline here, woman disappears after calling 911 to report child alone on an interstate in Alabama. This is 9.18 p.m. at night. Sun's just going down. This appears to be very dangerous, but I think this was a setup from the very beginning. And without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. Starts with breaking news. That breaking news this morning, family police looking for this woman, 25 year old Califia Carly Russell. The details surrounding her disappearance are alarming. Hoover police say she disappeared from the side of I-459 around 930 last night after she called 911 to report a toddler walking on the side of the interstate near exit 10. Now, after calling 911, she stopped to check on the child, called a family member to tell them what was going on. Well, that family member lost contact with her. The line, however, remained open. Now, when Hoover police arrived to where she was last seen, they uh, found her car still running with her belongings inside including her phone and smartwatch, and they have not received any reports of a missing toddler. So we are certainly following, certainly following this very closely this morning. Family and friends are meeting at the Hoover Met right now to get the word out, but to begin a search as well for Carly Russell. So right away, if there was no report of a missing toddler, that means that this toddler was probably set out there by some adults to use as bait to kidnap her, to do something to her. That's probably what's going on. Hopefully, she will be found safe, but that is most likely what happened. And our Jonathan Skinner is live there now with the latest on that. Jonathan? Hi, Mike and Janice. Yeah, we're here with the family and friends as well as the parents, Carlos and Talitha Russell. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all for the coverage. Yes, ma'am. So first, what, what's sort of the last thing you remember as far as seeing Talitha, I mean, seeing uh, Carly and uh, as far as hearing from her as well? Yes, I last spoke with Carly about 9-18 um, last night. She left to Zeke's and was headed home. Um, she picked both herself and my, me and herself up food. Um, then she talked with um, my daughter-in-law about 9.36. She told her she saw a child on 459 right before exit 10 um, that appeared to be three to four years old by themselves. She's pulled over. She called 911. But in the process, at some point, she got out the car. Um, my daughter-in-law could hear her asking the child if they were okay. The child didn't respond, or at least she didn't hear her respond. He or she respond. And then she heard um, our daughter Carly scream. And from there, all we could hear was noise, background noise in her phone, which we later found out was noise from the interstate. And so um, they have found her, um, her wig and her hat and her cell phone that were um, in close proximity to her car. So if anyone sees Carly from the pictures that we have um, put out, just keep in mind um, because her wig came off, her hair would be braided down to her scalp. So she won't have, you know, long hair or anything like that. So what it tells me is that it probably was some struggle going on, right? Probably struggle going on the phone and the hair, the wig, all of that is right there by the car. It's probably a struggle. So the child was probably set out there by some adults. Now, whose child that was, I have no idea. Maybe the child belonged to the adults. Maybe it didn't. But I'm pretty sure the child did belong to the adults because, again, there was no report of any child missing. So if a child's out there on the interstate, then there should have been a report of the child missing. Maybe the child wandered off. How did the child get on the interstate? What really happened? This was probably something, maybe she was followed from the Tzatziki's to this particular location. 
set that child out there, and then now here she is. And this could be a thing that happens all over the country. I've heard about this happening before, not necessarily with a baby specifically or a toddler, but with a with with something. I've seen it before. Before we get right back to the story, I have my own story. Now, I've seen kind of like robbery scenarios almost take place with me. But one time I went to an ATM machine uh, many years ago back in Virginia when I lived there. And as I'm, it was like on a Sunday or something. It wasn't a high traffic day. I believe the bank was closed, but the ATM machine was open on the side of the bank. Now, once I get there, it's like eight people. There's, there's a car on the side, not moving. It's just hanging out there. It's a vehicle right at the ATM machine. And there's no need to get out of the ATM machine. But for some reason, there was this girl who was, I guess, supposed to be enticing her, her body and everything like one of these Instagram models or something like that. But right away, I'm like, okay, what's going on? You got guys in the car just sitting there. What they want is for me to pull up and wait because I see this woman. And then once I pull up, you got the car right there full of guys, car right there full of guys. They get out, rob me. I already got my car right there. So I'm about to go to the ATM machine. So I already know what's going to happen. So I just drove right past it. You see, these kind of scenarios always take place. And in that situation at the ATM machine, I knew better. But if you see a child on the interstate, you're going to want to help. You're going to want to help. But unfortunately, in today's day and age, you probably might just want to call the police and keep moving. You don't get out the car because that could easily be a setup. People use their children in this kind of fashion. It's really unfortunate, but it does happen. Let's continue here. That um, is reflected on the picture. She pretty much has cheekbones like me. Um, pretty much our face is the same structure. So... Um, that's pretty much all the information we have. We do have some indication that there may have been a gray vehicle that a trucker saw that pulled in front of her car at some point as they were passing along the interstate. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And that's all the information or leads we have at this time. Yes. So I just ask everyone, if you would, pray. We are trusting God. We are staying positive. We are not allowing any negative thoughts to enter our minds. So all that we're doing is trusting God, believing God that our daughter will be brought home safely. Yes, ma'am. And you have a lot of uh, support here, yes, family and friends as well. Yes, for everyone that is supporting us and has been supporting us since they heard of her missing last night. So we're just eternally grateful. And again, we have more support coming. coming. We want to com continue to, to apply pressure to this thing. We don't want this to die down. Um, we need this to blow up. Yeah. Um, so if anyone sees anything, no matter how minute, no matter how insignificant you think it is, please contact 911, contact us, uh, and just, just, just keep us in your prayers. Absolutely. And we actually are, these people are here to help start a search party. Anaya Blanchard's mom is also on her way over here to help lead us in the search. of. She has experience in it, and she's going to give us some pointers as well. But we just ask everyone to please, 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 wherever you are, if you're not in Birmingham, whatever, they could be in Georgia, we don't know, Mississippi, Tennessee, anywhere, just please keep your eyes out and um, be vigilant. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. and Mrs. Russell, just thank you so much for your time. And All right. So I will link to this particular video, the article and everything in the description box. If you're on IG, visit a link in the bio, go to the corresponding article on the website. But as I close, I want to say this. Hopefully they find Carly alive and well. Um, this is most likely some type of abduction. Hopefully it wasn't um, a thing where she's gone to a whole different state or she's been harmed in any way. Again, hopefully she's found alive and well, but these kind of things happen. It's really unfortunate that people will use their own children to do things like this, but this, this is not uncommon. Unfortunately, I've seen it before. I saw a, a picture on Twitter of a random stroller on the side of the road at night. Now you might want to get out and see what's going on. Is there an abandoned baby right there? But see, now you are putting yourself in danger. Same thing with me at the ATM machine, putting myself in danger, even going to the ATM machine. You might see a family on the side of the road at night talking about, oh, we're disabled and 
can be use your phone, you're putting yourself in danger. The way things are nowadays, not the way it used to be. You might want to get on your phone, call 911, and say, hey, you know, a, a child's right here on the side of the road. And if you must help, if you want to do something, don't, don't get out of your vehicle, have a weapon on you, be ready at all times, because what may appear to be innocent and you're doing the right thing, as you should, may not be the best thing for you to do. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you, what do you think happened here? Do you think there was some type of abduction and the child was used as bait? Could it have been just a random encounter that did not involve the child? If the child wasn't involved, then why was there no missing, no missing person report for the child? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. Um, you guys know where I stand. I don't want to blame Carly at all for what happened here. I'm just saying it's kind of a cautionary tale. She did the exact right thing. She did the absolute right thing. She called the police, number one, called a family member, number two. She pulled over, checked on a little child. Are you okay? She did everything right. But in today's day and age, sometimes doing what's right may not be right for you. It's sad that it's like that. We live in a crazy and evil world, but that's just the reality of our circumstances. Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.